Let's do some news! My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today is January 22nd, 2021. The time is 1500 hours and 9 minutes. 3.09 p.m. Pacific Time. Today's news was not supposed to happen, but then news happened. All at once. <laughs> All at once. Chat is joining me today. We've got some stowaways from uh, from the YouTube comments. Snuck in here, huh? <laughs> what up, tours? <laughs> there was no news, then there was lots of news. That's right, there was lots of news. Greetings from Slovakia. It's, oh, it's just after midnight there. Nice. You already made it to the stream. Hello, future self. Watch this on YouTube. The internet found out and did a last minute update. That's right. It is news time. Excuse me. Drinking some mediocre beer. Ah, so. <clears throat> let's start with GameStop. <laughs> GameStop hit all kinds of headlines today. But not because... Not because of any... You know, but they're not making the company better. They're not like succeeding in anything necessarily. They're just doing their day to day thing. But on the side, there's a little bit of a quarrel going on be between the uh, between Reddit's self proclaimed autists. Okay, <laughs> self proclaimed. Ask any one of them. <laughs> and Citrion, which is a short selling firm. Uh, headed up by Andrew Left. Uh, they got into a little bit of beef. And now, as a result, uh, GameStop's stonks went up uh, 69%. Nearly, nearly 70%. From $20, roughly $20, uh, to $72.88. Nice. Nice. Oh man, this was hilarious to watch because so first off, let's talk about Wall Street bets. <clears throat> How about I just pull up the subreddit actually? You kind of need the visual to really get a good understanding of uh, of just where the where the mindset is, okay? So Wall Street bets is <sighs> It is a collection of day traders, uh, meme lords. Uh, there's some you know, long-term folks. Uh, but for the most part, it is just a bunch of fucking people just fucking memeing on fucking stocks. Like, just whatever, whatever fucking weird shit they, they sink their teeth into, and they all jump on it, and they just, they just go until they can just collect the attendees, and that's it. They wanted to collect the profits off of something that this huge group can buy into, drive the stock price up, and then <laughs> short, and then sell, and then, and then they pull out, and then tendies for everyone of course not everybody is successful i have been i have been part of this community for a couple years now uh and <clears throat> i'll tell you for the most part people lose big <laughs> people end up losing pretty fucking big uh and they'll post it here and they'll and they joke about suicide and all this stuff now i don't i don't know if any of them have or anything like that but they 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 joke pretty openly about this it's a pretty it's a pretty non-PC subreddit, for sure, right? Um, <laughs> look at the pattern, I know. <laughs> it's just... So, so they... Uh, so now let's go to GameStop. So GameStop. GameStop obviously has been having issues. Uh, they brought on Reggie from Nintendo the, on the board. They brought in a couple other people, and they've been trying to come up with new ways to basically... Um, uh, to restore faith in the company and to get this thing turned around and make it make it into something that's going to work long term, right? GameStop has a brand. They have a brand. And so they're trying to make that work. Um, now, for the most part, GameStop stock, stock, stonks, stocks has been on the decline, just like slowly. If you look historically, just slowly kind of dying off, right? Then they pick up, uh, was it Ryan? Ryan Cohen. Ryan Cohen, uh, he sits on the board. What? Hop up. What? What do you want? You get up yourself. Uh, they put Ryan Cohen on the board. Ryan Cohen comes from Chewy. Chewy is a pet food delivery service. They also do like accessories and toys and all that stuff. Um, 
And that service does very, very well, especially, of course, the past year with the pandemic. So this is a very, very successful company. They put them in. Um, <clears throat> now, Cohen has become kind of kind of like the golden boy of uh of wsb think of it like how gabe is how gabe newell is to gamers right like <clears throat> gabe could do no wrong he's he's i mean you can see you see pictures like this but with gabe's face and you wouldn't even bat an eye because that's just how gamers are that's just how we are right so that is what what uh, Cohen has become to the WSB community. Now, they cycle through their heroes, right? Their golden boys get cycled out. You know, Musk is up there as well. Elon Musk is up there as well. Uh, and they rally behind some of these stocks for no reason sometimes, um, <clears throat> simply because they like one person that's there. So that's how GameStop became a new target. Now, Andrew left, I'm sorry, uh, 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 yeah, Andrew left, uh, who is part of the Citri Citron, uh, Citron Citrion, I think it's Citron, uh, uh, short selling firm. Short selling is when you basically borrow a stock, I'm trying to explain this, borrow a stock and then sell it with a promise you're going to give it back, but you're hoping that the stock price is going to go down, and so you buy it cheaper, you pocket the the margin that you get you pocket the, the profit and then you give that that share back to where you borrowed it from okay so it's it's a gamble you're you're instead of betting instead of buying a stock and hoping that it goes up you're buying a stock or you're selling a stock and you're hoping that it goes down so you could buy it back and then get your uh <clears throat> and then take the profit and then you'll pay an interest and all that stuff for the, for the person you got the uh the, the share from so there's entire firms that are just basically designed on analyzing the markets, selling the stock, and then turning around and making that money. But they have thresholds that need to hit, right? They have thresholds they need to hit. And uh, if they break that threshold, they start to lose money. They're betting on the stock going down. So if the stock goes up beyond their purchase price, right, or their sell price, uh, then they have to buy it back. And they have to buy it back fast. Otherwise, they're going to be stuck buying it as rebuying their own shit back as it goes up. And now they're losing money. So, of course, somebody had to open their fucking mouth. Andrew left. He even made a video. We're going to watch the first 30 seconds about this. Oh, with this. Oh, hold on, actually. Hold on. We turn off. I have music going in the background, I think. Yes, I do. Uh, I don't know where it's at. <laughs> Let me grab it. One second. Technical difficulties. Music, music. There it is. Boom. Got it. All right giving you five reasons why GameStop is going to $20. Uh, I've never seen such an exchange of ideas and people so angry about someone showing you the other side of a trade. And not just saying a company that, let's just say, is supposed to make the world a better place, uh, maybe a Tesla or security problems or COVID. This is a failing mall-based retailer. So the amount of people who are so passionate about putting GameStop higher, not based on any fundamentals, it just shows the natural state of the market right now. Or as Seth Klarman said today, a bunch of frogs in a pot of boiling water. So let's just get right to the five reasons. So he goes on to explain why he thinks that it's going to go to 20. Now he says it's going to go to 20. He's talking about it's going to it's going up. He, he says it's going to go back to 20. So don't he's trying to convince people don't buy don't buy don't buy because he has a shitload of stock that he needs to buy back once once it reaches a certain threshold. And he's not the only one. He's not the only one. As a matter of fact, uh, I read that this was the most active day in trading since 2002. And I believe that, um, I mean, this could be wrong, but I just read this number, so I should have wrote that wrote down. But uh, I believe that GameStop has like 92 million shares or some crazy number like that. So there's plenty of shares to like go around. Uh, and so he obviously is a short seller. He's hedging his bets that this thing's going to go down. And now he's putting out videos saying it's going to go down. Don't, it's going to, don't, don't buy it. It's going to, don't, don't invest. It's a failing retailer. Nothing he says is wrong. Right? Nothing he says is necessarily wrong. It's a failing retailer. Uh, but Reddit doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> Wall Street Bets doesn't give a fuck. They're going to buy in and they're going to go long. So they're, they're saying they're going to go long uh, to basically hold on to the stock and hope that eventually the company pulls out. Reddit's going to Reddit. Exactly. 
<clears throat> he also delayed the video because he forgot about the inauguration. That's right, he did. Um, so selling increased so quickly. Uh, the stock started selling so fast and the price started increasing so quickly that it hit a rule threshold where once it increases by, I think, like 10% or something, they had to put a pause on it for whatever reason. It went up by, by that's where the 69% comes from. Um, it went up and they had a pause. They actually had a halt trading temporarily to give short sellers and such an opportunity to basically clear their shit out. But what happens is when these guys go back and they buy their stock back, Right, because they had to get that that stock shares back and give it back to whoever they got it from. The, in order to get that back, they had to buy it. So what happens when you buy it? Well, when you buy it, you end up driving the price up even further. So, so it was just this snowball effect that just kept pushing GameStop into these astronomical numbers that it probably hasn't seen since its inception. Just absolutely insane. Look at these. Look at this. Just cruising. Just cruising, and then just bam, just up. Let me actually pull up the. Uh, let me pull up the whole, <laughs> you see GME stock. We'll pull up GME stock. We'll take a look at their five year history here. Um, let me blow this up. So this is just today, right? You see it goes up, <laughs> stocks only go up. Uh, you see over here, where are they at? Five days ago, they were trading at uh, $35. One month ago, the low point, $17. Say year to date, let's go one year. Here we go. So a year ago, a year ago, $4.21. This is when I would have owned stock here because I bought a bunch of stock like years ago. Let me see, five years ago. Um, yeah, so look at this. Let's go max. Jesus Christ. It's never been this high. <laughs> <laughs> this is the highest GameStop has ever been since 2000 and what? 2002. <laughs> Oh my god, it's never seen numbers this high. Uh, further proof that the stock market isn't real money. Man, if you if you buy and sell cryptocurrency, uh like you see it too. Like it's like you're just basically buying and selling on faith. You're just hoping that everybody else is moving in the same direction you are. Is this illegal on some level? I am not qualified to tell you if it's illegal or not. I will tell you though that there are regulations that are in place to keep people from basically grouping together and moving on a stock. Right. Like you can't necessarily you can't get a ton of people together and like move on a stock. Right. Uh, now, I don't know what, what that's called necessarily, but um, because Reddit is an open forum and they're just putting out whatever it's like, oh, I'm just going to come get some tennies off this. I'm going to get some profits off this. And so they just like start rallying around it. Um, it's kind of a gray area. And so, and that's why exactly, that's why the Twitter account was dangerous. So WSB had a Twitter account that was basically kind of uh, taking, taking all of these, this discussion that was just openly happening in threads and condensing it down to like some tweets. And it made it seem like they were organizing in order to move on certain things. So <clears throat> it's for formally, it's formally called pumping and dumping. Okay. Uh, insider trading covers specifically do, uh, doing so with information. Yeah, that's right. Insider trading is information. Um, so it was, uh, so the, the, the Twitter account ended up shutting down because they were worried that it was going to, um, well, whoever it was, was getting harassed because nobody at WSP knew who was running it. Uh, and so, and also they don't want the unnecessary attention as if they can not, <laughs> as if they can avoid it. Like the shit that they're doing. And it's just hilarious, man. Like we go back here and it's just like, here's somebody who's, um, who <clears throat> he went in a buy, uh, what is this? For eight hundred dollars, sixteen thousand dollars. Mom, why are you crying? GME portfolio is up. Here's this. Here's this guy investing. He's at a hundred thousand dollars right now. Uh, yeah, it's up forty one thousand dollars just today, just today. Uh, as Citron, what does Citron have to say? Nothing. It says Citron. It says no longer commenting on GameStop. It's just done. Just pulling out. It's done. Uh, they made a private edit and shut it down. So it's just. It's just like there's. There's just so much. I don't even know the word to describe this this kind of behavior. Uh, and again, they 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 use terms like they call themselves autists. They call themselves retarded. Um, they they rally around the idea that they're just a bunch of idiots that <laughs> that just buy stonks. Because why? Because stonks only go up. Here's one that actually I think Wolvie uh, shared. Is this the same one, Wolvie? I think so. 
Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> this guy, oh no, this is not even it. This guy, yeah, 100, 13, elite. Nice, elite savings, sir. Uh, somebody that, Wolvie, well, you linked earlier was in like the 11 million range or some shit like that. Like just making stupid amount of money. $100,000 put in, it came out, walked out with like 11 million or something. Go to the top post. Oh, is it? Oh, here we go. GME YOLO updates, January 2021. Uh, here it is. So last price is forty eight sixty five. Change twenty two dollars. Uh, change da, da, da. days gain two point two five million two two point two million dollar gain. Total gain five point two million. Total gain percentage is if we really need the percentage. Uh, Thirteen thousand forty two percent. Um, started with uh, yeah, started with fifty three k. Now he's at eleven mil. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> But it's not over yet. <laughs> it's not over because you know we still have we still have Monday. By the time Monday come Monday morning comes around, uh, and we could still see there's like after after hours training and all that stuff. Like we could still see some movement. If you look here, we could still see some movement after hours. Um, but no money, I believe, is going to be exchanging hands or anything until Monday morning, anyways, when the stock market opens. Um, I'm willing to bet there's going to be so much movement, whether it's up or whether it's down, that they're going to probably halt trading on this stock again. Um, and that's just temporary, uh, probably first thing Monday morning. So so if you're if you're up, you know, 6 o'clock Pacific time, uh, what is that, GMT? Uh, like 2 o'clock GMT, then, uh, you know, pay attention to see what happens. Just see what happens. That's because uh, it's going to go somewhere. We just don't know where. And, and they're saying they're going to hold. They're convincing everybody to hold. They want to hold because the longer they hold, the price is going to maintain. If you start selling, the price is going to go down. So they're going to hold. Well, they say they're going to hold. <laughs> but more than likely, what's going to happen is a bunch of people are going to wake up first thing Monday morning and just be like, Pew! just start, just get rid of it, get out before you can. And then uh, it's probably going to dip. But if it maintains higher than what the average was before, then it was successful. That's what, uh, that's that's where that's where Reddit wins, basically. <sighs> You're also on the rocket and holding, Pew says, staying for the squeeze. <laughs> Don't hold! Hold! <laughs> oh my god. Everyone holds so I could sell. Exactly. Yeah, that's what happened with Dogecoin. I got so much money in Dogecoin right now, which is so stupid. I know. I know it is. But I bought it low. So I'm I'm like, I'm sitting pretty, I'm sitting pretty right now. Uh but I'm just like, come on, guys, drive up Dogecoin. Let's get it, let's get it to one penny. <laughs> Let's get it to one penny. We can do it. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Gotta have some play coins. Doge day. The Doge day will come. That's right. Yeah, Bitcoin. Bitcoin and Ethereum are like my safe. Those, 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 those are my safe words, right? And Tesla. It's like my safe words. Dogecoin is the one that if that ever takes off, I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm done. I'm gonna pay somebody else to stand in and do streams for me. <laughs> The Doge day will come. Oh, man. <clears throat> um, let me see. <laughs> Penny stocks are good to invest in. Yes, they are. Yeah. And, you know, with cryptocurrency, like, that's such a mythical, like, entity. Like, you're just kind of buying into faith. Uh, you just got to basically just wait for, like, Doge to come back around. Once the, once the Doge fucking meme comes back around and starts getting any kind of hustle... Uh, especially through any of the like, you know, cryptocurrency day traders or whatever. Like, there's plenty of YouTube channels and shit, and plenty of Twitter accounts that like that like, that focus on just cryptocurrency trading. Um, once once you get Doge, once you get Doge in their mouth, man, it starts going up. It starts going up. Depends on the project or if they would find a way to use Doge. There was the Doge NASCAR that was pretty funny. Fucking loved that. That was so good. Ah oh, man, so. Ah, uh, speaking of, mm, speaking of nothing, uh, <laughs> moving on, let me see, should we talk about this Buckers guy? I kind of really don't want to talk about this dude, but I think we'll have to. So there is, so there was a situation that happened, and this is definitely uh, going into the drama realm right now. Um, there was this guy named Buckers, and he is a, uh, was a Twitch streamer, and uh, this hit the top of LSF. Uh, he's banned. Yeah, he's formerly a Twitch. He's formerly of the internet. Um, and see, is he banned because you can't show him on Twitch? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Fuck. Can I show the video? I mean, like. Uh, let me see. Yeah, we're gonna show the video. We're gonna show the video because, like, 
it's fucked up. Now, just so you know, just so you know, um, this is like, this guy definitely mistreats his kid. You know, you guys are saying no. Okay, fine, 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 fine. I think you're right. I think you're right. What I'll do is I'll include the link in, um, in the notes. I'll actually drop the link right now in chat. But yeah, I was going to skip this, but I feel like it's worth, it's worth bringing up because this guy's a huge piece of shit. And there is, we don't know if there's any follow-up just yet, but there was somebody in and I should go to the comment here. Uh, so here's what happens. <clears throat> this guy is playing. I'll narrate it for you. This guy is playing. Um, uh, he, he's playing Madden. And he gets mad. He slams his controller on the ground. Now he's got he's got his kid like sitting on his lap. The kid is like a toddler, probably I don't even call it a toddler. It's a baby. It's like eight months old or something, right? Um, and he slams the controller down. He starts yelling, "Oh, I broke a three hundred dollar controller!" And he's fucking raging and shit. And then he fucking and then the kid like, starts crying. So he puts the ba turns around, puts the baby on the bed, not gently, but he doesn't throw it, right? And then he gets comes back, he gets super fucking mad. All this is within frame on that video I showed you. You could totally see all this stuff. This is not exaggerating. Um, and then he turns around, he yells at the kid, like, probably this far from his face, right? He yells at the kid, and he's like, pretty much slings the kid. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely not as hard as the cat, you know, but, uh, uh, <clears throat> and then he's like, yells at the kid, he's like, shut the fuck up, or what the fuck, or something like that. Yells at the kid's face, the kid's crying. It's fucking hard, it's a hard watch. It's a hard watch. Um, there was a there was a comment in the so obviously he was you know he disappeared. Uh, he changed his account name. He uh, he wiped basically his entire existence off of all social media. If you Google him, if you Google him, he will. Uh, you could still see he has his accounts and everything. Like you could still see the references to his accounts because still cached. But if you click on it, they're all gone. So he wiped everything. I think even his his uh, Reddit user account. Yeah, he changed his account to I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, exactly. Yeah. Um so there was a comment that I found in uh in the uh the, the LSF Reddit post where it says uh hijack and top comment, the wife has taken action and kicked him out. The baby is saved and his family is there to love and protect him. Everyone, please stop harassing the family members for this fuck up. They're scared. And so it says uh, Captain Burke says that uh he's close to family. Uh, it's the only thing I've heard about it for the last few hours. So, you know, this could just be a random person just basically saying that they know. Just for karma, karma farming. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, he says that people have already have already found the wife's social media and family members Facebook pages. You people don't need anything other than to mind your own business and let the family take care of this. Now, that's, you know, if this person's legit, then, you know, they're 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 right. Like, you know, it doesn't we don't necessarily need the Internet to like to get pitchforks and go after the family and go off after all this stuff. Um but we definitely don't need to ever see that dude on the internet again. Ever, ever, ever. <laughs> Never. Pitch, pitch force up or down. I'm confused. Exactly. There was a Facebook chat log. Oh, I missed that. I missed that. Uh, uh, Wavi, I didn't see that. Um, so yeah, he's been, he's basically disappeared. Disappeared from the internet. No idea where, no idea what's going on. All we have is a random Reddit user who says that they're close to the family. And that they are, um, uh, and that they are, they kicked him out, and that's it. But shitty, just like the shit, the, the shit bag of the fucking week, man. Um, the bitch ran, of course. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of people doing shitty things, we got an update. We got an update. You, oh, we got you, up. Oh, you, 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 oh you, you, that's you, right. You. That's right. Hold on. You, 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 you. you. That's right. You. Oh, it's back, baby. It's back. You. Not for good reasons, but it's back. Say it ain't so. Soldier boy. Our boy, soldier boy. Lawsuit. Rapper soldier boy beat sexually assaulted assistant. Now, I don't really give a shit about Soulja Boy, but he does stream on Twitch, so we can tie that into this news. We can. We can make it work. Uh, he has been uh, he has uh, been accused via a lawsuit of doing some pretty outrageous shit, like locking his assistant. So this is all from, uh, it says, woman alleges the rapper held her hostage and refused to pay her. Uh, this is his assistant, and this is back in 2018. And uh, apparently, allegedly, he locked her in a room without hot water for like three days. Uh, refused to pay her. Like there's just there's just so many things over the course of the abusive relationship. Um, 
uh, defendant Wei, Soldier Boy, uh, directly uh, punched the plaintiff directly in the head on at least 10 separate occasions. Uh, once, Wei followed an assault by saying, I should have killed you, according to the suit. After verbal assaults, he would often say, I didn't mean it. And this, the suit added. Uh, here it is. He also locked the woman in a room without hot water for three days after she tried to quit and leave, according to the suit. So there's this, there's just like a slew of things. So the suit said the woman was left with nothing because she was not paid the wages she was promised while employed by Wei for 18 months. She alleged she, she wasn't paid the $500 a week promised to her by Wei for her duties, which included cleaning, cooking, driving the musician around, and ha handling travel itineraries. Wei's treatment of our clients as an employee and as a person who deserves respect has traumatized and filled her with fear. His abuse imprisoned her physically, mentally, and emotionally. And, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah, and literally... When she mustered the courage to flee, he impoverished her. Uh, impoverished her. His exploitation severely hampered her clients, our clients' ability to reestablish herself in the workplace and in society. We believe he should be held accountable. So he did go to jail in 2019, right? We talked about that. Uh, he did have. Um, he didn't. <laughs> he did have a bunch of ventures that you know, like kind of let, went into gaming and such that made him a bit of a staple in gaming somehow. Uh, and he. Uh, <clears throat> he's. Uh, he's. We've known that he's done some weird things. Done some weird things. Now, this is a lawsuit. We don't know if this is true yet. Representatives of Way did not immediately respond to requests for comment on Friday, but a spokesperson told TMZ, Soldier would never put his hands on a female. He wouldn't beat a woman and put his hands on a woman. This is nonsense. It very well could be nonsense. It could. It could. I don't know what kind of evidence is going to be presented or anything. But we'll find out. You just want an excuse to bring that back, <laughs> bro. After I don't get paid for like a week, I'm like, bitch, where's my money? 18 months, 18 months, it's a lot of weeks. <laughs> it's like 70s of the weeks, yeah, yeah. What did you miss? Oh, bloody rogue, you missed you, you. you missed it, man. You missed. Is anyone surprised he's a piece of shit? I mean, like, he's definitely tried to try to what was it? He had like the soldier beats or whatever, he, like soldier, they like, soldier like knockoff, like you know, technology stuff that he was selling for a bit. And I don't think anybody really, the people that got it said it was trash or they didn't get it at all or anything like that. Just God, Jesus. Five hundred dollars a week below minimum wage, bitch, where to get that job? That's more than minimum wage, isn't it? I don't even fucking know. What is minimum wage? I don't even fucking know. It's like seven dollars and something cents. Never mind. Yeah, wow, not even close. It's it's way above. <laughs> seven times forty. <laughs> Uh, Mike adding sounds to news like idiocracy. Yeah, 7.25 federal. Exactly, exactly. And then minus your taxes. Fuck. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <sighs> Speaking of. <laughs> Speaking of lawsuits. <laughs> Do you guys remember? Uh... Last year, middle of last year, in the midst of all the crazy shit happened with the pandemic, you don't remember? No, he was like, no. We had this lawsuit that came up. This guy said that uh, he was suing Twitch because uh, hot female gamers caused him to injure his penis. Remember this? You remember this, right? It's a real lawsuit. He was upset. Yeah, you remember this shit? <laughs> Well, guess what? He's back. <laughs> He's back. He's got a new lawsuit, baby. You thought it was fake? No, dude. He really files these things. He's back. And, ah, oh, man. Well, let's go to page six. Here's his new lawsuit. He's filing it against Twitter. Um... Apparently, he's local. <laughs> Twitter and AOC, a U.S. representative, uh, and another representative, Ilhan Omar. Uh, and he says, let's see, it was at number uh, 6, page 6 to 15. Here we go. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The plaintiff was recently watching a Twitch stream where AOC has a massive following of 835,000 followers. AOC and Ilhan Omar were streaming a video game known as Among Us. We talked about this. But instead of AOC streaming with any disenfranchised or poor, unpopular people that she constantly talks about on Twitter, she decided to instead stream the game with famous and popular rich Twitch streamers such as Pokimane, who is a multimillionaire, and Hassan, who has previously said America, quote, deserved 9-11, quote. This is dangerous propaganda that occurs daily on Twitter and through AOC and Omar Twitch streams. He's finally against AOC. Oh, man. 
And it gets better. It gets better. It says, one of the streamers playing with AOC and Omar is Asan Anabi. Oh, yeah, he goes on. He talks about Asan, right? And then he says, oh, yeah, Il- Ilan Omar was also featured on these Twitch streams displaying a highly expensive computer system, as can be seen in the PDF attached at the end of the complaint, which most poor and disenfranchised people can't afford. Even before this COVID-19 pandemic, AOC even has a white boyfriend and would never think of dating a Mexican such as the plaintiff. But she'll often cry out on Twitter for racial equality. They're hypocrites. This... This would be fine as long as the other side of the political spectrum could voice their opinions as AOC and Omar still can on Twitter, Twitch, and elsewhere, but they can't. Trump is banned on all these platforms as a growing number of Republican viewpoints. This is precarious. And as the ACLU already pointed out and warned that the banning of this president's Twitter account is dangerous, especially since it will result in unchecked power of Twitter and such people as AOC and Omar. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is why it's not called IQ Anon, okay, guys? Like, this is this is why. This is a great example right here. Oh, man. What the fuck are you reading? An actual lawsuit. An actual lawsuit. <laughs> oh, my favorite line. My favorite line, though, is the AOC even has a white boyfriend and would never think of dating a Mexican such as the plaintiff. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> Turn it off. Yes, please. Just un- unplug unplug the United States. And just plug it back. Wait 10 seconds. You gotta wait 10 seconds and then plug it back in. <sighs> if you think your freedom of speech means you can get, can't get banned from Twitter, <laughs> a private company's platform, you're dumb and wrong, period. Can this guy get banned from the internet? <sighs> We're trying, <laughs> apparently. Screw the guy. I want to see the lawyer took the case. I mean, what is he expected from this? Money. He got money. What does he care? Like, this guy's got a bunch of complaints. He's going to file the complaints, and he's going to go from there. Oh, man. <clears throat> what year did we head down this reality? It's been a slow, winding, slow, but we, just, we made it, though. We made it. <laughs> uh, you know, like, probably somebody that just bought their damn, <laughs> bought their law, their law degree. Just like we almost bought a doctorate right there. Jeez, just go and buy it. You still have to pass a bar, so I don't understand how the fuck this happened. <laughs> this type of lawsuit is a definition of privilege. Is there some lawsuits for lawyers that will take stupid lawsuits? There is. There, there's rules. Sorry, there's rules. Yeah, there are some rules against people that that uh, waste the court's time, basically. But, uh, but you know, I mean, apparently there there's some merit here somewhere. Uh, I mean, if AOC would just date this guy, we could be over this. He'd be done, you know? I don't know what he's going to get out of him. I mean, he probably said his penis is broken. So I don't know. I mean, maybe he's a nice guy outside of that. Personality can make up for it, I guess. Frivolous litigation is the use of legal processes with apparent disregard for the merit of one's own arguments. It includes presenting an argument with reason to know that it would certainly fail or acting without a basic level of diligence and researching the relevant law and facts. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. So... I mean, we thought it was going to end here. We thought this was it. We were like, ah, that's so funny. What a great story. We thought that was the end of it. <laughs> nope. Who's this, by the way? Jay the Jaguar, huh? Let me see. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. I'm just going to save that for later. Um. Oh, hi, Donut. Hi. Hi. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come up, say hi. Up, 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 up. There you go. There. Doesn't that make everything better? Right? That makes everything better. Oh, hello, buddy. Oh, you're so early. You're so early. Why are you so early? Mwah. You're such a good dog. Go on. There you go. All right. Everyone's better, right? Palate cleanser. Palate cleanser. You should read that first one. Which one? The. <laughs> uh, maybe we get Judge Judy on this. He mentioned if I fought her rainbows, I'd be famous, but it doesn't mean that some people say this. I can't. Your friend, my, my, my friend paid to get a reverend license and did the ceremony for a couple on base. He then slept with the wife. Ah, <laughs> well, let's see. Moving on, we have other things to talk about. Real stories, <laughs> real stories. Uh, are you like the case is opening, and you can sue people who give you their digits? I didn't know. All right, real stories. I mean, the other one was that was a real story, man. That was a real case, <laughs> fucking legit case. So weird, so weird. Clay, Clay is the latest victim of Tencent. (sighs) (sighs) (laughs) So, Clay is 
Um, now, majority owned by, majority stake owned by Tencent. Now, they say, all right, incoming. Oh, 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 what's up, bud? I edited the article of. Uh huh. And named and renamed it to two gigantic kaijus. You edited a Wikipedia the, article? No. A article. On, Wiki, on, a, on a wiki? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh huh. That's great. Uh huh. You want to see? I have to, I, you have to see it later. I'm gonna write it on my show, okay? After my show, definitely. <laughs> so they say, talking about Clay, uh, they say that uh, they are they still maintain creative control over their games. Um, they also go on to say that in 2016 or 17 or so, they say in the article here, um, they that they went through Tencent to distro their Don't Starve through China. Uh, Don't Starve Together and such. Um, they seem confident that they're going to maintain control and nothing's going to happen and all that stuff. It's just basically a majority stake. Um, and this will allow them to just further navigate the changing industry, I believe is what they say. Um, so it's, uh, you know, obviously I have a bias against Tencent. Uh, I actually saw uh, somebody who works... So I saw on Twitter, uh, somebody said, oh, here comes all the here comes all the people saying that, you know, Tencent is bad and all this stuff um, in the article that he had written for a site. And I thought that was or I don't know if he wrote it, but somebody wrote it for 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 the site. And what I thought was funny was that the site that he was linking, the site that he works for. Uh, was formerly Zam that was dissolved by Tencent. So, <laughs> so it's kind of weird. It's, it kind of struck me as weird that you know you you're you're pimping an article from a site that fuck it was formerly Zam uh, uh, that Tencent basically dissolved and laid everybody off uh, and saying that nothing bad will come from this. Ugh. But you know it's possible. It's possible. They have stakes in a lot of companies. They really do. They have, a, I mean, they own like, this is 10 cents way. They go through and they buy a whole bunch of companies and, and they just, you know, they just, uh, see what they could do to turn a profit or to turn money, you know, get a profit off it or get them into other, usually what they do, at least it was what they did when I was working, um, for them, they would try to cross pollinate their, their resources. So they would have, a um they would have a game that they're developing over here for one platform and then they're like okay now we have this other entity that can make websites for games so can you guys make a website for this game and so that's how they like to work they like to operate they basically want to have control of everything so that way they can they can manage the deals in between all of the um you know all of the different companies that they own and so that's kind of how they operate and i'm willing to bet that's what they want to do here this is not too dissimilar from our next story which is vicarious visions merging into blizzard not too dissimilar from this vicarious visions uh they're the ones that brought us um Skylanders, several Crash Bandicoot games, uh, and the Tony Hawk series, uh, including the remaster, which was really good. <clears throat> and so, you know, in this case, it's kind of the same thing. Vicarious Visions was already working with Activision. I, I like to say that they're all the same. Uh, Activision is Blizzard and all that stuff. Uh, but they are formally moving them from Activision over into Blizzard, so they will focus uh, entirely on... Uh, working on blizzard games so which means that they're not developing their own they're not the creative lead on anything anymore they're just taking a backseat to the to what blizzard is doing and and and, and uh developing uh and by blizzard you know you know what i mean those those handful of ips that's underneath that moniker um but this is effectively what Activision is doing here is effectively what Tencent does on a global scale where they're just moving people around and resources and just trying to make things efficient. So that way they can, you know, make the, the more things they make efficient. Oh, thank you, babe. Um, uh, the more things they can, uh, they can clean up, the more money they can make across the board. 
So he's like, hey, we're a big company, eat up small ones. <clears throat> Rock and Roll Racing 2. Yeah, is that, what are you guys looking forward to? Rock and Roll Racing 2? Hell yeah. <laughs> we love that. Yeah, I know. Don't make a pair to the head yet. <sighs> this also means, though, that Crash Bandicoot, um, Tony Hawk, and, uh, what else? What other games they do? Uh, Skylanders. All of that shit can be put into Heroes of the Storm now. Tony Hawk, man. Coming to Heroes of the Storm. That's right. All of it. I look forward to that. <laughs> uh, but yes, they're fully dedicated to Blizzard games. So there's 200 extra employees that are going to be working exclusively, but, ma but, but maintaining their offices in, uh, I, I believe, in New York or something. Um... But they're going to be working exclusively now with um, with Blizzard. They've been they've been with uh, Activision since 2005. So this is not like it's not like uh, they acquired them and then you know moved them over right away. Like they've they've done a lot of work underneath the Activision uh, the Activision uh, uh, umbrella. Here's the storm is still alive. It's they still got some stuff. Yeah, that that means 100 employees by 200 2022. Mm -hmm. We did to the remaster trilogy. Uh, Toys for Bob did Crash Four. Yeah, they they did uh, VV did I think like all of the Game Boy games uh, as well as a bunch of other Crash Bandicoot games. Uh, I believe I know for sure they did the, the the Game Boy games. There's still a lot of people playing actually. Jade has been replaced with Tony Hawk and Shadowlands. It'll be like a Tony Hawk skin for like one of them. Yeah, totally. <laughs> there's 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 some character in there somewhere that can be easily reskinned to, as Tony Hawk and it'll totally fly. It'll totally fly. Um, fucking Declan. <laughs> The exact opposite of uh, of condensing resources into one thing has happened to Electronic Arts when they have recently lost full and total control over the Lucasfilm Games titles, which means Star Wars. Previously, EA was the sole publisher of Star Wars games, but Lucasfilm has now taken that away from them. And now other title other publishers can take part specifically ubisoft ubisoft is taking on a uh project in the star wars universe that is open world rpg and it's going to be developed by massive entertainment which is the same guys that brought us uh division far cry 3 and just dance so it's going to be a mix of one of those <laughs> It's gonna, it's gonna be one of those. <laughs> Not sure which, but you know, um, Ubisoft and Just Dance Wars. Ubisoft uh, has had its own, uh, you know, issues. They've made headlines lately for all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, I don't know about Massive Entertainment specifically. Massive, Massive Entertainment is a dev studio. Ubisoft is the the publisher. Um. We already got we got Star Wars Just Dance. What? 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 Bullshit. Star Wars Galaxy Remastered. <laughs> Could you imagine somebody what? Um oh God, make a remake of the Xbox Connect Star Wars Dance Game. Oh shit, there really was. Oh what? Hold on a second. Is this Connect Han Solo Dance? No. Unbelievable. It is real. Cloud City's always looking for new talent. You think you have what it takes? Oh, I know what song that is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll just, oh my god. Oh my god. We'll just keep it low for now. I did not know about this. That's oh, a cover? Okay, cool. That's it for the news. 
Uh, thank you, chat, for joining me. <laughs> uh, chat, you're lovely. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. My name is Mike B, aka Phony Fami, aka Mike B on all the things. Leave a comment below, but keep it peaceful. Keep it sane. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Everyone say goodbye to YouTube and some of you guys. All right. Join the alliance, it feels so good Oh, stop feeling misunderstood 